So as you all are finishing socializing your thoughts and putting pen or pencil to paper, I will just uh, take prerogative by being placed at the microphone to share a couple of reflections. You know, one, I will say that it's such a, an incredibly impressive panel. Congratulations, Michelle and everybody for the panel and Andrea's presentation as well as Aisha's today. And I found it very just inspiring, the framework that we, we heard first from Aisha to think about being bold and audacious, and then Andrea uh, also acknowledging the benefits of incrementalism. And I, I listened to much of what was discussed today through those two, two lenses. And you know, it's pretty clear that when you look at Minneapolis, and congratulations to all the great work that you've done, uh, we have a, a similar history, if not shared, in segregated communities, the way that wealth was created in our particular uh, communities, the way that environmental injustice was the way in which uh, many of society's deleterious investments were made and the impact that it has on racially segregated schools. We also have a, a sharing of challenges, whether it be having conversations with people who are not necessarily at the place where they embrace this concept in their backyard. And uh, Andrea, while you identified the incongruity with people who have the all are welcome signs in multiple languages <laughs> representing multiple cu cultures, for them it's not an incongruity. While they think that they would be very happy to have anyone of any racial or ethnic background living next to them, just keep it to one family. They just don't want multiple ones of them. So we got to figure out how to have that conversation, at least in our neighborhood. And you know, underlying all of this is just a market that has become incredibly challenging, whether it's the Midwestern market, the DC metro market. Uh, we talk about the need to provide for uh, unsubsidized housing that is affordable, affordable for people across types. You may call them Noah's. We here call them Marks. Uh, but you know whatever you call him, uh, he is very much an endangered species. Um, so we really have to figure out uh, what these bold trends really mean for all of us. And I promise I won't go go long. But just a couple of other notes. You know when it comes to being bold and audacious, um, we have to have a conversation in our community about zoning. But that doesn't mean that there's not going to be incrementalism in determining the right policy solutions of where and what and how. Is it an exact replica of Minneapolis? Is it something slightly different? Where you all looked at four, settled at three, do we think about something different or some other paradigm? We also have to recognize that planning for the unplanned in Arlington is going to be really, really hard. Our community for a couple of generations has very much been uh, a part of having broad conversations about what happens in every nook and cranny of our 26 square miles. But we haven't had that conversation about certain areas. We have to have it. We can't run away from it. Now, figuring out how we do it, what are the sensibilities, talking about your children, talking about other people, we have to figure that out together. Uh, you know, when we talk about this issue, Incrementalism is unsatisfying for many of us because we realize that incrementalism is not going to get the job done. So bold and audacious means solutions that match the scale of the problem. But we also must recognize that in order to get there, maybe it does require that we have demonstration projects and proofs of concept to actually show people who don't quite believe what we uh, of the, uh, the policy church believe. Um, and then we also have to think about, in a forward-thinking way, better than we have, have before, how technology can actually achieve our goals for equity as opposed to being a hindrance. We have to actually not look at local government as consumers of tech, but as the shapers of tech, so that we can actually realize um, the vision that we have. And uh, I love this last question uh, from uh, Jasmine, or comment from Jasmine, because while I am very much about embracing the wonkiness of housing, if we want to actually support the ability for people who are low income to be able to thrive in our communities, we really need to think head on about how we create a different structure where people aren't quite so very low income. Think about what are some of the levers that are artificially suppressing 
the value that people get from their hard-earned labor. And uh, yeah, applaud that. <laughs> and certainly while you know, we have limitations in Virginia, um, incrementally, we can look for ways to maybe get our state legislators to change some of the enabling ordinances. Maybe perhaps it's time to think in a bold and audacious way, sorry Arlington Chamber, about changing the very notion that we're not a home rule state entirely. Maybe it's time to have the conversation that local communities should determine what happens locally. And just as a, a final sort of note before I get into hearing from you all, I'd like to say, Andrea, love what you had to say, but you've also made my life immeasurably difficult. <laughs> because probably it started already, but we're gonna get a flurry of letters and notes and policy papers and everything else saying, why aren't you doing this? What about this? What about that? Um, I, I will just say in sum, uh, a lot of what Minneapolis did will certainly inspire what we look at, analyze, and think about moving forward. I do want to give everybody the note that a lot of it is something that's very much been a part of our thinking, uh, and particularly as we think about the Housing Arlington Initiative, as well as the equity agenda that I introduced at the beginning of the year. A lot of these things are a part of what has driven public service. And uh, also, I note that you, you had a slide where you looked at your investment uh, in your, your annual appropriation to your trust fund. I just want to note for those in Arlington, not to make you feel bad, <laughs> adjusting for population, we're contributing more to our AHIF. So don't tell me to put more money in the AHIF tomorrow, <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right, so with that, I want to hear from you all about what was uh, inspirational, what inspired you, what moved you, what is top of mind about what we should be thinking about locally because we uh, very much, I think I speak for my colleagues and I still see uh, Eric Gutschall and Matt DeFerranti here. Is Katie Crystal still here? She just left. She just left and Libby's in Europe, so she would be here otherwise. But uh, I, I know we're all very much interested in having actionable ideas that we can move forward with. So please, hands, don't be shy. Um, Marguerite. <laughs> I'll be nice. Uh, <laughs> oh. For once. But, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're right. Um, what I really appreciated about the Minneapolis um, uh, project there, what they've done, is that I, I really feel like Arlington needs to do a better job of engaging communities, especially the historically black communities, regarding zoning, housing, th those kinds of changes the laws, uh, development, because my neighborhood, the Halls Hill neighborhood, has truly been, I'm going to use the word, ravaged by uh, developers. And um, families, black families have been moved out. We used to be 100% black. Now we're 11% of uh, the community is black. And it's because as grandparents died, they, uh, developers came in bought up the property, and where one house stood, there's sometimes three, or maybe two, or even, um, and the average price of those homes are a million plus, 1.1, 1.2 million dollars. So um, for some of us, we're smart enough that we've held on to our family properties, and that's the only way that our children have been able to um, uh, come back and, and live in the community. So the black communities have, um, the county has not engaged them in the processes because the same things have happened to Johnson Hill where they had lots of affordable housing. All of a sudden they took away the eggshells. That's what I call them, I grew up with. And now they're like three times as many townhouses that no one can afford. So I took that away engaging our communities with these kinds of projects that um, are causing um, some racial disparity still. Uh, thank you, and one of the things I think we think about a lot is not only to how to have uh, good engagement, but equitable engagement. You know, one of the things that we know, Andrea, when you talked about you're delivering this comprehensive plan for um, you know, 2040 and doing it in two years, I got jealous. <laughs> We, we just concluded a three plus year project, uh, process for our public spaces where it really wasn't fundamentally that controversial. You know, it was about things that we all wanted, just figuring out how to make it fit. And if it takes us three years to do that, 
then we, we got to work on some things. All right. Uh, yeah, so I've just uh, got uh, my takeaway has to do with the incrementalism that Andrea proposed uh, earlier in the program. Um, specifically in the manner in which we need to enumerate and flesh out our incremental changes uh, to pass regulatory scrutiny in terms of the Dillon rule and the ordinance changes that need to be made, um, as well as to kind of pass the court of, of public opinion. Um, and in that regard, I really was struck by this uh, advocacy movement, the Neighbors for More Neighbors. Um, that requires specifically enumerated changes and in incrementalism so that the advocates can go out and support a platform and kind of prevent misconceptions and prevent uh, the kind of NIMBY folks from making misleading arguments about all the, the high rises going up throughout Arlington or something like that. Um, so it's really about the, the fleshing out and enumeration of those incremental changes in order to pass regulatory and public approval. Mm, thank you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna be a little bit challenging and not picking on you, but I'm asking the whole board. My, my takeaway, there were the, I was very impressed by the chart of the five elements, the five keys, and the one on the far right was leadership. And it seems to me that what uh, Minneapolis did, so I'm, we're, you know, I think very wonderful, the housing Arlington, it's very important. Uh, and the, we enjoy, we the housing community enjoy a lot of support from the board. We have for a long time and kudos, kudos, kudos. But it seems to me that what Minneapolis did uh, was a bigger step than that even. That is to say that it sounded to me like the, their mayor and some key people were actually out in front pulling the community along. At least that's what I took away. And, and with all the support we have from you all, uh, I think the challenge is we're going to need somebody up there actually pulling us along, giving us along. You got, you're going to get lots of ideas, lots of support from the community, but it is going to require another whole step up in the game, and uh, that's going to be a big challenge. I think that's fair. I, I, think, uh, I think the board will be up to it, but I, Dave, as much as I don't want to diminish leadership, I think uh, another big takeaway from Andrea was that engagement was a key pillar. And, um, you know, just speaking generally, this is no criticism of anyone's engagement efforts thus far, but we do a lot of engagement when it comes to um, shopping ideas, fully baked ideas or perspectives or positions. What we do a relatively poor job of doing is having those relational conversations about what are your concerns in the neighborhood. When we talk about density, what does that mean to you? We try to provide a model for that last year with uh, some big idea roundtables that uh, were Katie Crystal's brainchild when she was chair. And you know, that's, that's just one thing. And one of the things that I think we recognized through that process, we had wonderful enriching conversations. And while there were some new voices to the table, most were known. And we realized if we want this to be something that really sets in in our community, the best speakers are not gonna be me or any of the members of the board. It's someone who lives across the street from someone saying, how do we make this work in our neighborhood? What are the things that you need to see? in order to embrace this idea that we are, we are uh, gonna have housing for everyone. So I don't disagree, but I wanna make sure we don't lose sight of that other piece as well. <laughs>